أعوذ بالله العظيم بوجه القديم وسلطانه القديم من الشيطان الرجيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wassalam said fi sahih la yudkhul an-nar ahadun fi qalbihi mithqal habbatan qardal min al-iman wa la yudkhul al-janna ahadun fi qalbihi mithqal habbatan qardal min al-kibr The Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wassalam said that one of you or that the person who has even a mustard seed of Iman will not enter the hellfire. And the person who has a mustard seed of arrogance will not enter Jannah. Ayyul Ahbab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to be of those people who possess Iman to be from Ahlul Iman to die as Muslims to have taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem wa taqu Allah haqqa taqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and fear Allah as much as you can or give him his rightful taqwa haqqa taqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun and do not die except in a state of belief or do not die except as Muslims. And that is the state of Iman. That is the state of the Mu'min. And there is not a person you can refer to as a Muslim who does not possess Iman. Every Muslim has Iman. As long as they are Muslim, they are in the fold of Islam. And they are from Ahla Iman. They are from Ahla, Is uh, Ahla Islam. So, the Mu'min is haris or ever striving to maintain his or her iman doing those deeds which will help increase his or her iman like reading the quran like practicing the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam like being in the gatherings of dhikr of the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like making dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal outwardly and inwardly and possessing those attributes of Iman doing righteous actions and as we know Iman is on our limbs our tongue and in our heart all of this makes up our Iman those are all po components or parts of Iman and the person who possesses arrogance kibir meaning that they refuse the haq and they are arrogant towards the haq when it comes to them so when the truth is presented to them they become arrogant and obstinate when you see this characteristic in an individual, you should advise them or stay away from them if you don't have the ability to do so. Because you don't want to be around those individuals who are arrogant to the truth of Allah Azza wa Jal, who are refusing combative when the truth comes to them. For example, those people who are obstinate in practicing the bid'ah of takfir, of decreeing other Muslims to be uh, disbelievers and focus on all their energy and time on the leaders 
and those issues which mostly don't concern them and are issues in Masail that are usually far over their head and their means regards to their level of knowledge. So when you hear an individual like this engaging in these kind of sins and declaring their brothers and sisters to be non-Muslims without the right to do so, and that the truth has been made clear to them, but they still continue on the path of arrogance, then flee from them, avoid them, because perhaps they may fall under that hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَا يُرْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ أَهَدٌ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالْ حَبَّةٍ قَرْضٌ مِنَ الْكِبْرِ مِنْ كِبْرِ That the person who possesses even a mustard seed of arrogance will not enter paradise. وَعِيَاذٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hakim. He is all wise. And He is Al Adil. He is just, the most just, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is the one who grants us that beautiful prize of being entered into paradise if we're if we're blessed to to do so and he subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his divine wisdom is the one who allows you to go astray and will punish you for your misguidance and for your arrogance and refusal of the truth and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from disobedience to him and forgive us of our many sins and protect us from being of those people who become arrogant when the truth is presented to us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.